Welcome to this semester long course on general chemistry. In this video, I want to introduce what you'll be studying throughout the class in the series of videos that you'll watch. Now, when I start my classes, I typically ask students, what do you know about chemistry? And I get the typical suite of responses. Uh, a lot of students will say, I know about the periodic table. I know about atoms. I know about molecules. Uh, these are things that you've been introduced to probably since elementary school to middle school science courses and have some general basic understanding of. Our goal at this level is to make sure that your knowledge is foundational, foundational enough to have a good understanding of the field as a whole and uh, serve as a bedrock for later, more advanced study of the topic as well. Most of you are either some sort of science major or are in some sort of pre uh, or preparatory curriculum that's going to get you into a career that involves a lot of science. So, um, so my goal here is to make sure that this course gives you everything you need to succeed in your further studies in your major uh, or in your further career after undergraduate. So uh, so first, I want to start off by just uh, giving a general introduction to what I believe is, is the definition of chemistry. All right. Now, chemistry is the study of matter. Right. A lot of people get that definition um, and stick by it. But I always like to add something to that definition. Chemistry is not only just a study of matter. It's the study of matter and how it transforms. Right. So if we're going to define chemistry. It is the study of matter and the transformations it can undergo. Right. So basically, uh, not only just being able to classify matter, right, its structure, its properties, right, but also how it transforms. Right? So if we if we have two molecules that interact to form another molecule, that's some sort of chemical transformation that's going on. Or even if we have some physical change in some form of matter, right, if we have water that's being frozen, to form solid ice, then there are changes on a molecular level that are happening that are, are explained by chemistry. And if you haven't thought of chemistry in this really general way, um, then it, it really serves to illuminate how broad uh, the applications of chemistry really are, right? So think about you know something like your car battery, right? Why, was, why does your car battery stop? Well, there's a lead storage battery there, right? So understanding the properties of that lead battery and how it interacts with the other components in your car can tell you why your battery might die, right? Or what about the, the fumes that come from factories? Why are we worried that they're affecting our environment, right? There's interactions that's going on between the gas that's coming from factories or cars and buses that interact with the ozone layer that call, give us pause about what's going on with the environment. Right. So these types of questions, understanding these types of questions requires an understanding of basic chemistry. Right now, chemistry is often called the central science. And this is not because chemistry is better than any other field, um, even though I might be biased if you ask me to answer that question. But uh, it's, it's because chemistry really sits at the center of foundational sciences and applied sciences, and it's, it's kind of the glue that holds them all together. So if we were to think about chemistry, right, let's let's put chemistry, I'm going to draw a little flow chart here, uh, and we're going to put chemistry at the center, right? Now, there are two foundational sciences that feed into chemistry and, and allow us to understand chemistry on a deeper level. The first is physics. Right. Physics is actually really important in chemistry uh, to understanding things on a on a fundamental level. Right. We're going to talk about electrons and protons, neutrons, these subatomic particles that make up atoms. Their interactions uh, are all dictated by laws of physics. Even the interactions between atoms themselves 
are governed by physics. The interactions between these charged particles are governed by physics. So a, a simple understanding of physics is going to go a long way towards understanding what's going on in chemistry. So I drew this arrow from physics to chemistry. Physics feeds into chemistry. Uh, the other fe foundational field that feeds into chemistry is mathematics. So math also feeds into chemistry, right? Now, if you thought you were going to get into this class and not do any math, you're sorely mistaken. Uh, chemistry requires a lot of mathematics, everything from unit conversions uh, to stoichiometric equations to chemical equations themselves all require some sort of mathematics. And also the physical laws that govern chemistry all have equations that are underneath them, right? That are lying underneath that explain uh, and communicate the physics that drives the chemistry. So these two foundational fields uh, drive chemistry, and then in turn, chemistry can drive a lot of different applied fields as well. So what do I mean by that? So one example I like to give is material science. So materials, science, and this is a relatively uh, new field, at least compared to, you know, physics and chemistry, obviously. Um, if you're not familiar with material science, material science is just what it says, the study of material. So this is things like, you know, making rubbers and plastics and, you know, different devices and whatnot, fabrication of different devices. This is at the heart of material science and chemistry is really at the heart of this field, right? Because being able to understand, like, if I want to make a better version of a plastic or if I want to make a better polymer, it's crucial to understand the structure of what's underlying that material. And the, the underlying structure is going to be governed by chemistry. How are the molecules bonded together? How are they interacting? Do they stack on top of each other? Do they lay side by side, right? You know, these types of questions um, about how different things are arranged really drives material science. Um, another one that you can think of is environment and agriculture. All right, so environment and agriculture. Right, again, this is an applied field, right? Uh, environmental science. Uh, understanding the environment, the changes in the environment, the weather, right? Understanding these on any sort of foundational level requires an understanding of chemistry. So it's going to be very important to understand chemistry to understand the environment. I gave the example just a few minutes ago of the, uh, the ozone layer, right? Um, different um, gases interacting in the ozone layer, what type of uh, effect are they having on the environment? That's all going to be driven by chemistry. Also, the life sciences, right? So if I've got any biology or psychology majors out there, right? The life sciences are driven by chemistry, right? So if you're thinking about psychology, um, you know, think about psychology. The fact that you're um, even able to understand what I'm saying right now is because of chemical reactions that are going on in your brain that are reacting to the words that you're hearing me say. The fact that you're even able to understand my handwriting is because of chemical reactions that occur when the, the eyes interact with the brain, right? There's so much chemistry underlying that field um, of life sciences, biology, uh, psychology, right? All of these things are driven by chemistry. Um, and lastly, I wanna bring up engineering, right? So engineering, Right. And this is really any type of engineering. So, you know, even like civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, all of them really require a foundational understanding of chemistry. Right. Computer engineering. Right. A lot of people are talking about quantum computing right now. Quantum computing depends on harnessing the power of the electron to alter and transform the way that we store data, right? So engineering really depends on chemistry as well. So when we say that chemistry is the central science, right? We're not saying that it's more important than any other field or more important than any other science. All this stuff is important to do and study. But what I like to bring up here is that chemistry really is the bridge. Right. Between these foundational fields, mathematics, physics, chemistry 
and these more applied fields, the life sciences, the material sciences, right? So hopefully with this uh, flow chart, you either see your major or your field of study represented here. And if not, probably what you're studying or interested in takes some major component from this, uh, from chemistry being a central science in this manner. And one thing that chemistry really does on taking more of a bird's eye view here, one of the major goals or you know major uses of chemistry is to be able to explain what's going on in our macroscopic world and give microscopic explanations about what's going on, right? So I like to think about this, you know, we have our macroscopic world, right? So everything is going on in a macroscopic world, right? So this is everything that you can see with the naked eye, right? Whether it's a house or a baseball or even a grain of sand, right? Everything that's going on in a macroscopic world, right? Chemistry really provides microscopic explanations. Right. So it really explains what's going on in the macroscopic world on a microscopic level. And I want to give an example of this. So I'm going to a new slide here. So what you see in the figure on the left, right, this is um, a, a iron fence that has experienced significant rusting. You've definitely seen a fence that looks like this. Uh, they don't have, even have to be super old to start to look like this, right? This is what's going on on the macroscopic level, right? You see an iron fence, it's starting to rust, right? What does that mean? What's going on on the microscopic level is where chemistry comes into play to provide an explanation. So uh, up here on the right, I've shown what a microscopic explanation might look like. And this figure is a little bit of an oversimplification, but this is just a general idea. So what's happening in this iron fence is that as it's exposed to the oxygen in the air, right? So in this figure, the red balls are the iron atoms and the black spheres are the electrons, and these blue spheres are the oxygen atoms. So oxygen is, uh, the, the iron's being exposed to oxygen over time. What oxygen is gonna be able to do is come by and rip off some of those electrons, right? It rips off some of those electrons from the iron surface and starts to form iron oxide, right? Which exhibits itself in a macroscopic way with this iron rusting phenomena going on, right? So it has a different color than the pure iron does. And that's based on its exposure to air. So this is gonna happen to any iron that's just left out to be exposed to our atmosphere that contains a lot of O2. And this microscopic explanation uh, really shows and explains what we see on a, micro, on a macroscopic level. Right. So um, I want to take a really simple example um, of how atoms can be broken down from different molecules. Right. So so you'll hear us talk about these two things a lot. Right. These two, um, you know, sort of building blocks of chemistry are atoms and molecules. And we'll talk more in depth about atoms and molecules in a second, or really throughout this entire class, you'll build a, a really good foundational understanding of atoms and molecules. But you can think of atoms, atoms make up molecules. So molecules are just composed of multiple different atoms. So if you want to think about it, an analogy would be thinking about the alphabet composing different words, right? Atoms are like the alphabet that we have. And when you string together different letters, you get words, right? So the same thing happens here where when you string together multiple atoms, you get different molecules. So let's think of an example, right? So um, I'm going to use a red sphere uh, to denote oxygen, right? So let's say this is an oxygen atom and I'll use this blue sphere to denote a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen's a lot smaller than oxygen, so I'm going to draw it as a little bit of a smaller circle there. Um, so, so oxygen and hydrogen. These two atoms come together to form one of the most famous molecules, water, right? We know that water is 
uh, is abbreviated as H2O. It's abbreviated as such because it's made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, right? So if we were to draw water as a, as a molecule, right, we might draw our oxygen atom in the center, and then we'd have our two hydrogen atoms just chilling somewhere on there. Now we'll, we'll come up with more sophisticated models for molecules throughout the course of the semester, but just humor me with this um, you know, sphere and ball model here. <laughs> so this, this'll be H2O. Right, and that's because we got two hydrogens. So we have H with a subscript two. That shows we got two hydrogens and we got one oxygen, right? So that's H2O. Now, one process that uh, water can undergo, like I said in the beginning, right? We're not just gonna look at classifying matter. We're looking at the transformations that it can undergo. What you can do with water is you can run an electrical current through water and be able to produce oxygen and hydrogen. So break it down into its elemental components. So what would that look like, right? So let's, let's take two uh, water molecules, right? So we'll have this guy. So I'm gonna draw two of these spheres, right? And two of these little guys on each one. So these will be two uh, water molecules, right? So Let's call this 2H2O, right? So we got two water molecules here, right? You run an electrical current through water. So let's say we have an electrical current. Then you break down H2O into O2. So I'll have one oxygen atom here and it'll be bonded to another oxygen atom. So these are two oxygen atoms. This is O2. And you also produce H2, right? So I'm gonna put two hydrogen atoms here together, and that's our H2, right? So you end up, when you run an electrical current through water, you can produce O2 and H2, right? So, so being able to decompose these water molecules into their elemental components, right? Elemental oxygen and hydrogen, right? Can be a starting point for making even more molecules, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a chemical process that they can undergo. So a lot of what we're going to talk about in this class is going to center around providing microscopic explanations for macroscopic phenomena and being able to explain on a molecular level right? What's going on? A lot of these microscopic explanations are going to center around what's going on at a molecular level. How are the atoms changing? How are the molecules changing? Right? So that's where this class is going to, to go. And I hope that it, it's interesting to you. And I hope it provides a foundation for you to be able to study whatever scientific discipline you're interested in.